Good evening and thank you very much for staying with us right here on A12 Live, Banama Radio 24. Another lounge comes back to you on a Friday evening. Today we take a look at the life of Nadia Heng, uh, Miss World Malaysia 2010-2011. She's also an MC, a host, a model, PR. She does everything. She's here in the studios with us. Well, Nadia, it's uh, very good to have you in the studios, uh, especially closing in on a fantastic celebration. Uh, are, are, you, are you preparing for the celebration? What are you doing four days of nothing to do? Oh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to four days of, uh, of nothing. Nothing. I, I mean, I'm probably going to do a little bit of visiting, mm -hmm. you know, uh, good lamang. And right, oh, I'm, right. I'm really looking forward to mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Well, I know, before uh, I got into the studio today, a friend of mine asked me about your name, Nadia Patulo Heng. Patulo ah, is uh, right. of what origin? Well, um, the funny part, the funny thing is, Patulo is actually my mom's, uh, my mom's maiden name. Mm -hmm. My mom's name is actually Nadine Gray. And I found out only this year that, that our surname is actually Patulo Gray. Mm -hmm. My granddad thought the name was too long right. and he dropped Patulo. Mm -hmm. And because I only found out this year and I thought, you know, it's ridiculous. Like when you when you get married, you know, quite often your maiden name gets dropped mm -hmm. and because of that, like, you know, Gray will definitely not be in it. And Patulo I didn't even mm -hmm. know, so I figured I'll put it in there. And right. apparently it's right. of Scottish origin. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, is matrimony uh, somewhere in the headlights? <laughs> no, not so. Mm, no, yeah, no, no. You're, you're mentioning matrimony, so we, yeah. we thought we'd just you know, find out you know, what's happening on yeah. that end. Well, you took part in Miss oh, yeah. World Malaysia 2010 2011. Now, what was that experience like? Oh, it was incredible. Um, we went to, it was in Sanya. Mm -hmm. The main stage was in Sanya, but um, it was a whole month. It was stretched out across the whole month. So uh, the first week we went to Inner Mongolia, mm -hmm. we went to Beijing, we went to Shanghai, uh, and it was a lot of just touring. a lot of traveling now. A lot of traveling, mm -hmm. yeah. It was 110 mm -hmm. different countries, so 110 gorgeous girls. Right. Like, you know, I can imagine. Mm -hmm. You know, quite surprisingly, everyone was really nice. There's right. no cat fights. Um, you know, a lot of the girls were actually very, very qualified. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you had architects, doctors, lawyers. So it wasn't, uh, it wasn't your stereotypical just beauty with no brains. It like. It, all yeah. of them women with substance mm -hmm. but, but but that's the stereotype usually yeah, when it comes it to pageants yeah you know uh, as soon as you see a pretty face uh, she must be uh, you yeah. know yeah. Uh, a bit empty up there it's usually <laughs> the case but it's not <laughs> like that anymore not, yeah. yeah and having said that you no know, taking part in pageants uh, or taking part in this uh, uh, contest you know was it something you wanted to do or someone pushed you to do it well uh, a colleague of mine at the time pushed me to do it mm -hmm. he was saying that uh, because there is an age limit and I think I'd approached uh, I think what's probably the last year that I could uh, be l eligible to join mm -hmm. so I decided to go for it so I'd never joined anything of the sort before so right. I'm glad that I did mm -hmm. yeah. and, and when you say a colleague what, you, know, you were working with a company prior to yeah, this yeah I was, uh, I, was in a, I was in a PR agency mm -hmm. and uh, my friend was telling me I heard they're having auditions and uh, you should do it it's right. my last year to, to try out mm -hmm. so I did mm -hmm. it <laughs> any regrets taking part in it no, no. I, I, it, it was an incredible experience you know now I have friends all over the world Right. You know, so it, it's it's amazing. Like if I ever decide to go anywhere for a holiday, um, mm -hmm. and now with Facebook, like I would imagine f five, maybe ten years ago, if you joined the pageant, you'd probably have lost touch with all the girls. And mm -hmm. now at least it's a network. You right. Know? So it's uh, it's it's good because you can keep in touch, and, mm -hmm. and it's a uh, it's a real friendship. Right. Yeah. You can't currently reside in Kuala Lumpur, yes. or do you, do you live in many places? I live in I live in KL. You yeah. live in KL, but yeah. you are predominantly from Anagri Samilan. Yes, I'm from Port Dickson. What your your uh, early years, your, your mm -hmm. school years were in Port Dixon? Yes, yes. Uh, I went to a local, I went to Chinese school. Chinese school? Yeah, mm -hmm. So you speak at the Mandarin? Mandarin, or right. Hawaii. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. Well, uh, and uh, what, what what age did you leave Port Dixon? How can you leave such a beautiful place for this? <laughs> Seriously. Well, <laughs> you know, it's where the moolah is. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's where the moolah is. <laughs> but no, it's, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, mm -hmm. I love KL. I, I love Port Dixon just as much, and it's nice to be able to go back for weekend retreats, and not many KL have that and even if you lived in Penang or mm -hmm. you didn't live in Sabah you probably don't have the luxury of going back every weekend mm -hmm. like PD is just a you know, stone throw away it's half like an hour's drive right it's, it's not it's nice. very far but but does your family still uh, live in PD? <clears throat> yeah I still have family there my dad still lives there like my grandparents are all based there mm -hmm. yeah, so, mm -hmm. so, so you've, you've, you've got your unit there for yes, you to go back yes. to every time and all my friends mm -hmm. you know funnily enough 
they all as much as they all come to kale to, to work or they go overseas they all go back to pd at the weekend and right. you know it's uh it's good mm-hmm. coming from pd you know starting a life within kuala lumpur taking part in miss world malaysia mm-hmm. or rather miss world contest and uh you know life changing for you you know after a while you you start you start i'm sure you started to notice that people start looking at you like ah, this is the girl uh, we've seen before in a magazine <laughs> we've seen somewhere how, how, how did you you know how do you cope with something like this was it easy or was it just a part of you uh-huh. or did you find it hard to get used to <coughs> this kind of life you know getting all the yeah. attention all I the time i see what you mean um funnily enough though because i like you know i grew up in port dixon right so mm-hmm. there aren't that many mixed kids anyway so i was right. kind of used to people pointing and be like i went to chinese school and, right. and then, like all the kids would be like they point at you and be like I'm a poor, mm-hmm, I'm a lang. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like so, so it's quite used to people sort of staring and and saying things. So honestly, you know, even after this, like it doesn't really feel any different because mm-hmm. you know, I guess you kind of used to growing. It's just I guess a different type of uh, of um, observation from mm-hmm. another person's perspective. Mm-hmm. Yeah, instead of going. Well, you currently have uh, you started your own company, a PR yes. company. How's that going? It's going well. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's going well. Um, it's fairly recent. It's fairly new. Uh, and um, yeah, I enjoy. I mean, I've been doing PR for like the past six years anyway. Right. So it's something that I've, uh, mm-hmm. you know, after I left uh, the old company uh, because I, I wanted to take on more hosting and try a little bit of acting, and right. you know, I figured I need a more flexible schedule. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, it's something that I still really enjoy. Like I made a lot of good friends when I was doing it, and um, and I really enjoy doing. I really enjoy it. So. Right. Yeah. Right. And you know, you were you were uh, recently featured in FHM. Uh, yeah. What was that like? You know, the experience of uh, <laughs> getting uh, stupid questions thrown at you. Yeah. Getting stupid uh, questions. Yeah, and yeah, no, so some of the questions were really. Like, I, d- I don't. I can't remember it off uh, the top of my right, head okay, now. Okay, yeah, I okay, did okay. read it. You know. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, it's FHM. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, they can give the people what they take, want. Take them with a pinch of salt. Yeah. 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 Yes. Exactly. Uh, but, but did you like the experience? It was. Uh, it was actually really fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the photographer that I had, he's from Penang. Right. And a young young son I hope I'm saying his name right mm-hmm. he's incredible like uh, I think I think anyone he anyone he works with he turns them to gold I mean I was really happy with the photos I mean mm-hmm. I don't I guess it's a personal perspective because I've, I've seen obviously a lot of shots that I've done before and uh, a lot of different magazine shoots and stuff and this is one particular one that I was really happy with uh, and it was it was a lot of fun yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. well uh, we're going to take a short break yeah. Nadia and we're going to come back just after the top five news and find out more about your life right here on A12 Live Good evening and uh, welcome back to the Lounge A12 Live, Benama Radio 24. Uh, we're currently uh, speaking to Nadia Patulo Henga. What lovely name, Patulo. And it was uh, forgotten for a while. Yeah, and it's it's back in circulation, just so you know it. It's not Nadia Heng, but Nadia Patulo Heng, Miss World Malaysia 2010 uh, 2011. Well, uh, the, it states here that you're Eurasian. How's that? Well, my mom is uh, English. English, my right. My is uh, Chinese. Oh, okay, so because uh, Eurasian here, the understanding of Eurasian is Portuguese or yeah, 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 yeah. I know. Well, it's it's kind of funny because uh, when I was growing up, you know, people always say, uh, uh, you you know, that you're Eurasian. So when I was a kid, I was like, mm-hmm. you know, well, I guess that's what I am. Right. But uh, you know, so it kind of stuck. But yeah, you're right. It, normally, when you say Eurasian, it's normally mm-hmm. Portuguese, um, uh, Malaysian, or whatever. Yeah. So, right. But my mom's English. Yeah, mom's English <laughs> and uh, Bapa Chinese lah. Hainanese. Hainanese. <laughs> <laughs> well, coming back to you and uh, Miss um, Mal- Mal- Miss World Malaysia, uh, you know, what was the preparation? like? Like you know, getting ready for it. I'm sure you had to uh, go for uh, different uh, talks, seminars, uh, learn how to walk, do the, the do the whole nine yards. Did you do that? Not so much actually. But I think um, I think the pageant world is somewhat um, you know it's it's changed. Like I think. It, Possibly before there were there was um, I think it also depends on the country. For mm-hmm. example, um, like the South American countries take it very very seriously. Right. Um, in Asia, South American, India uh, takes it very seriously. Oh, in India, oh yes, yeah, yeah. yes. Mm-hmm. So I mean, I think it depends on the country. Malaysia, um, for the Miss World pageant, not so much. Uh, we didn't really have um, all the all the grooming and the training. Mm-hmm. There was a little bit of guidance, but it w- definitely wasn't as much as when I went there. You know, clearly there were girls who had ten. I'm not kidding you. They had ten suitcases. Mm-hmm. Like they had a, a suitcase just for shoes, right. a suitcase just for um, gowns, a suitcase just for like daywear, suitcase mm-hmm. just full of cocktail dresses. So I mean, and, that's and the they were all sponsored. 
Um, not necessarily. Some, mm-hmm. some of it, yeah. Some of the countries, like it, really depends. Uh, some countries are ver- like South, uh, South Africa. Mm-hmm. They have a massive sponsorship. Right. So some countries they really do go all out. Uh, mm-hmm. But I know some countries like Malawi, mm-hmm. uh, who is my roommate, you know, she didn't get anything. Like uh, she had absolutely nothing. So mm-hmm. she, she, you know, she had, she had to go and buy her own dresses. Mm-hmm. But it's nice because, you know, Miss World is sort of um, uh, expanded. Now they have 110 countries. Mm-hmm. So even though you know. You may have a representative from uh, a country that's that might be fairly new to have joined um, under the umbrella. Right. You know, it's nice that they still get to send a representative, mm-hmm. and it's a you know it's a great experience. When I met Miss Malawi, like she'd never, you know, never dreamed in a million years that that uh, she, she would have also been sent to China. So right. it was, it, you know. But before going for Miss uh, Miss World, you would yeah. have you would have had to go for a Miss Malaysia of some sort. <coughs> yeah, uh, yeah when, when a national a bit, uh, level. Yeah. but mm-hmm. my, my my year was a little bit different. Mm-hmm. Um, um, they didn't quite do it um, uh, like how they normally have auditions nationwide. Mm-hmm. It was more of a, a closed door audition. Right. I think also because like it depends on the time of year. So when I won, it was um, it was very close. It was like literally a few weeks before they had to send a representative. So they didn't have a full scale uh, event that you would typically have. Mm-hmm. So yeah. So the prep period for me was really short. I didn't have I really didn't have that much time to do anything. Mm-hmm. So it was mostly just sort of. Um, I, that's why I was really grateful. I had friends and my aunt, um, and, uh, and we did get some sponsors from uh, designers like Carbon Ong and Carl Ong and beautiful gowns. So oh I was right. lucky in that sense. I got all of that. Um, but the prep period was really short. Mm-hmm. Uh, really short, meaning uh, what? So a month? Two months? Not even two months, like mm-hmm. a month. A month. Yeah, a month. Um, probably less, slightly less than a month. By the time I found out um, that I was going, mm-hmm. you know, it was uh, very, like, I was literally running around like a chicken without a head, right. getting my gowns, getting my shoes you know thinking because the thing is you normally have to come up with your national um, dance and stuff so we didn't have enough time to prep all of that either Mm -hmm. so normally you know normally there is uh, a longer prep period for in my case it was a little bit strange I think because it was a bit of a rush job because sometimes they announce the they announce the finals like Miss World they'll say okay the finals are going to be in whatever month but if they tell you before you've actually had the chain the handover it's very tough for the next girl yeah right but having said that no when, when you prep yourself you know, what do you have to do when you get that to the finals? Yeah. Now, what are the different things you have to yeah. do? Well, I think, um, like in Miss World, there's basically five different categories. So you have um, be- you have uh, beach beauty. Mm-hmm. So um, you also have top model. Right. Uh, you have uh, talent. Mm-hmm. You have um, uh, beauty with. Um, Beauty with a purpose, which is basically beauty uh, your, with a purpose. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it's kind of like your CSR, uh, oh, well, not CSR rather, but more of a charity aspect uh, aspect to it. Uh, so you pick a cause that you would champion, and then finally you have um, sports. Mm-hmm. So it's it's very all rounded, mm-hmm. and basically, you know, these are the five categories that you would normally prep for. Mm-hmm. You, you so prep for quite, five categories, yeah. and when you get up there, you know, you, you do all the, what all you have to do is uh, do the catwalk or the many other things. Oh yeah, yeah, so that so those are the five categories. So mm-hmm. you could win uh, any of the five titles. Of course, then there's the main, you know, you win the Miss World title. Right. But there's also subsidiary titles. So these are the five subsidiary titles that you would And these subsidiary titles are what are the... Oh, these yeah. are the subsidiary titles. <coughs> exactly. Right. And uh, yeah. wh- what about you know, getting on stage and uh, you being asked a question? Yeah. You know, some smart aleck oh, right. will come up and ask you a question. Yeah. And, yeah. Well, well, the, well, it's quite funny because uh, they actually have pl- preliminary rounds. Mm-hmm. So what they will do is they actually have all the goals, you know, 110 goals, um, your... Your, your, your sort of put onto a a, a, a table right. of maybe say ten. Uh, you have a panel of ten judges, mm-hmm. um, and you walk in one by one, and they'll ask you a series of questions. So it's done over this series of days, right. and then from there they decide the top. Uh, you know the top 15 mm-hmm. are going to go to the finals which is on the world stage which um, you know that's on the live television where they have to answer a question on the spot mm-hmm. that's the finale night so there's, there's there's preliminary rounds where they already ask you questions mm-hmm. and um, <coughs> they obviously don't tell you what they're going to ask you right um, but they did say this. They said on the final night, mm-hmm. if you, you know, if you go through to the finals, for heaven's sake, please don't say that I vote for world peace. Right. Okay. <laughs> Which was really, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, this is what the uh, the chairperson of Miss World said. Right. Because you know, right. It, all the. I mean, it's, a, it's an ongoing joke. It it's is. A, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it was quite funny when she told that mm-hmm. to all of us. Mm-hmm. And, you know. Which and, 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 and what was your question? What did they ask you? Um. Oh my gosh. Uh, what did they ask me? I'm sure you remember. I, mean, I should remember. Yeah. Right. Um, what did they ask me? Um, I think it was. 
Honestly, I can't even remember now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think it's one of those things that, that you can't, you try to block out because mm-hmm. you don't know whether you do a good job at it. Mm-hmm. You just and go on and on hoping just, that you know, the yeah. answer is coming out. Yeah, because yeah, uh, cause, you know, like um, every, all the girls are really nervous. Mm-hmm. You, like they, they really, they have um, a whole bunch of different questions. Anything, you know, and never, never necessarily the same thing twice. Mm-hmm. Um, but I remember, I think the preliminary round wasn't so stressful because they asked a series of questions. So it was more like they get to know you a little bit they make you feel comfortable so they ask you a little bit about your background and whatnot mm-hmm. and then they ask you like a I think a character it, it was it was more or less like a test of character you know they ask you a question for example um if you were to champion a cause what would it be and why that sort mm-hmm. of thing mm-hmm. yeah. but I can't remember my exact question because they were why? a series of questions it's like a 20 minute chat that mm-hmm. they have with you and mm-hmm. different judges will ask you different things. I love yeah. for getting up there and seeing what life is yeah. like there. I'm, I'm sure th- uh, this is a cliched question, but <laughs> I'm sure it has changed your life. Has it changed your life? It has. Like, I mean, I suppose it has, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, the fact that I now have, um, you know, got friends all around the world, which I would not, uh, definitely not have had access to otherwise. Right. What about uh, opportunities, you know, getting... And opportunities, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, um, I think coming back, uh, I think, it sort of injected a lot more confidence in me to go and pursue things that I wouldn't normally have done, like just um, hosting, for example, and and presenting, um, and and going and trying a little bit of acting, something that I wouldn't necessarily have um, pushed myself to do mm-hmm. initially. Mm-hmm. But it kind of actually gave me more confidence that I can go after things that, you know, that I wouldn't necessarily have done before. So this. hosting was something you were you were doing for quite a while too, um, or you that, just not started? So much. Yeah, it was uh, it was actually a lot more. Um, happened after I came back from Sanya so mm-hmm. when I came back from Sanya um, I uh, again like I had I don't know I just felt like a little bit more confident when it when it came to you know being myself and, and, and doing these things in public I, I mm-hmm. did do a little bit of it before then mm-hmm. but it's sort of um, uh, I mean if Zandra can do it or, anyone can do it yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well yeah I suppose yeah, yeah. well uh, coming back to uh, what you call that what you're doing now yeah. and uh, all the things that, mm-hmm. that are happening in your life yeah. where, when you look at uh, what's what's happening in your life and you look at beauty pageants mm-hmm. uh, in Malaysia and a lot of them need rescuing okay mm-hmm. there, okay. there are many shady ones here mm-hmm. which when I'm not going to mention yeah. names <laughs> but I, I've had yeah. the I've had the uh, opportunity to interview girls who came in for some really shady pageants and right. you know, yeah. and having said that <laughs> Malaysia is also going through this phase where everyone every girl looks at someone like you and thinks that they have to be fair right. uh, yeah in, right. in in order to to look beautiful mm. and right. everyone's going out there we even have uh, what do you call that uh, skin, uh, skin, what you call it, creams, uh, or right. rather oh, advertisements right, right, right. for skin creams right. or whitening products, whitening, and, stuff, whitening yeah. products and stuff, right. which uh, which is a big problem in pressure. countries like Australia. You'd be sued for doing something mm. like that, yeah. and, and it's happening here. Mm. So, having said that, do you think that people like you or, or Pan Asians yeah. as yeah. such who are who yeah. are forefronting the country yeah. are, are putting together, putting, putting uh, uh, bringing bring forward a wrong perception, right. so to speak, right. on beauty? Well. You know, funny you should say that. Um, mm. Like, I think a couple of weeks back there was an article about, uh, um, I think it was one of the, which paper was it? I can't remember. But anyway, an article came out uh, talking about uh, whether Pan-Asians uh, should represent Malaysia and do they represent Malaysia? Mm-hmm. You know, it's a little bit off the topic, I suppose. Right. But it was quite No, I've got no problems with yeah. Pan-Asians representing yeah. Malaysia oh, yeah, no, because no, no. you're, yeah. You're but I mean, but in, I mean, I suppose representation, it's, mm-hmm. it's uh, sort of similar in a way. Yeah, Sarima is very much Malaysian, you know? Yeah, yeah exactly, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, um, that's, that's one thing. But I mean, uh, going back to to um, you know, you're saying that whether it, it puts pressure on people thinking that only if you're f- right. fair skin that you you are able to excel in this field. Is that what mm-hmm. you're saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because I remember uh, mm-hmm. 15 years ago when I tried for TV, I couldn't mm-hmm. get in because of my skin color. Wow. Yeah, okay. and and it, things have changed it's, now, of it's, course. It's, I think it's ridiculous mm-hmm. because you know when you go to the international arena, it's the complete opposite. You know, these girls. Um, like I, I think um, like Miss United States and a few of them I know, they had tanning creams because they were so pale. Mm-hmm. You know they want to look healthy and tanned, and it's it's very it's very silly. It's very ironic that mm-hmm. in this part of the world the perception is such. But it always I guess you know you could say the grass is always green on the other side. You mm-hmm. know you're always trying to strive to be that be you know something else. Right. Um, and you place more emphasis on on mm-hmm. what you see overseas because whatever is happening overseas is always a, a, a better representation of things which is not obviously necessarily the case right. um, and uh, you know I think it's I think it's sad that, that mm-hmm. people mm-hmm. have to feel the need to have white
like your uh, products. And, and, and uh, last week, just last <coughs> yeah. Saturday, I was at a self-defense seminar, which I did for a bunch of girls, and they're from this Indian pageant mm-hmm. association of mm-hmm. some sort. Mm-hmm. And I, 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 I know full well that there's one for Chinese mm-hmm. and you know, one for different races. Right. And why can't we have one f- just for all Malaysians, yeah. whether yeah. you're a black, blue, purple, yeah. or yellow? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I suppose, well, Miss, uh, I guess there are different uh, objectives and goals behind them, like Miss World Malaysia and Miss Universe. Um, you know, they're, they're very much across the board. Anyone can, can try out for it. And we've had uh, representation from different ethnic uh, backgrounds represent Malaysia. You know, we've mm-hmm. had, uh, I mean, um, Dato Yasmin Yusuf, we've right. had, um, you know, Su Insi, we've had Tanuja. You mm-hmm. know, so it's all very um, across the board. Right. Um, but then I guess, like, there are various pa- pageants that have different goals and um, different objectives behind them, which are maybe, for example, more um, uh, specific culturally mm-hmm. driven you know mm-hmm. uh, so like they have I think Miss Chinese Cosmo right. so it's it specifically caters to a particular target audience and that's why they normally would push only say for example only for um, uh, representation from if you know if you have a Chinese background or if you speak Mandarin mm-hmm. you know so it's a different um, I suppose different framework different structure altogether right. yeah right but, but having said that now lo- looking at you and how you, you've gotten this far um, er- earlier today I, s- I was speaking to someone and I said no I'm running an interview with you and they said you know, these girls it's easy for them you know they're pan Asians they get into pageants they start doing some MC work this that this that and then they end up marrying a rich guy and I thought that was too, <laughs> too judgmental wow, and, uh, okay. yeah yeah so you know, how, how do you how do you change this, this yeah. stereotyping of oh honestly I think you know it's very I suppose it's very easy to say that I can mm-hmm. see why anyone might say that right. but the thing is um, at the end of the day you also need to prove yourself mm-hmm. so I mean you can be very pretty you can be pan Asian you can you know be be six foot tall and you know look uh, you know extremely elegant and gorgeous mm-hmm. the thing is if you don't have the substance and if you don't you know if you're not it's very easy to also fall into the category of a diva and mm-hmm. like and be very difficult to work with right. which also can backfire mm-hmm. you know so I think at the end of the day it depends on your work ethics depends on your substance depends on um, you know whether you're dedicated and you respect other people all those things are equally important and it doesn't matter what you look like mm-hmm. so you know the next girl who who could be slightly less prettier right. than you know um, uh, you know uh, than this than this girl that we're talking about mm-hmm. you know but if she has all those things that this girl doesn't no one's going to want to work with the gorgeous one because right. she's a diva because she's hard to work with you know so I mean it's easy to it, I suppose it's easy I can see where you're coming from mm-hmm. when people say that mm-hmm. but at the end of the day those are the things that would determine how far they will go mm-hmm. and if you look at the structure of, of, of education in Malaysia and from education you transition into working life Mm -hmm. there's a void there and I kind of see this void I've been noticing it for quite a few years Mm -hmm. I think a lot of uh, women a lot of girls Mm -hmm. who can't come out into colleges Mm -hmm. and go out to work especially from the lower income group Mm -hmm. where they had to work hard go to Mm -hmm. college and then you know subsequently go out to work and they they were never taught how to dress how to you know carry themselves Mm -hmm. when they're out in the working Mm -hmm. world they don't know stuff like this and this is where I see people like you come in you play an important role and having said that no awareness Mm campaign Mm-hmm. for students are coming out into yeah. the working world. Yeah. Have you ever thought of it? Well, um, actually, um, speaking of that, at, um, at um, Amateur Academy, um, we're sort of partnered with them and uh, we have the new academy on the 8th floor mm-hmm. and we're actually just starting to offer uh, corporate and also, you know, workshops for, for, for ladies or for... <coughs> depending on your needs and one of them is actually grooming mm-hmm. um, so you know having said that that is something that we're actually currently working on fantastic so it's like, that's great yeah, work yeah. yeah etiquette grooming mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. how to dress just basic tips and stuff that you that can enhance um, and make a world of difference when you right. go for an interview and just you know yeah right and from here on in what are your personal goals you know what do you want to achieve yeah. in the next four or five years you've already started your own company mm-hmm. yeah. you know you're doing well within the entertainment world mm-hmm. going out doing a lot of hosting mm-hmm. doing some TV work you know what well, what do you plan to do? It's very cliche, mm-hmm. but honestly, mm-hmm. my goals are to be happy with whatever I'm doing. So if I, you know, um, I hope obviously hope to expand my business, mm-hmm. um, and I hope that uh, the academy will do well as as well, of course. And I and I do enjoy what I'm. I do enjoy the hosting and the emceeing right. while I while I still can. You know, you mm-hmm. don't know when your expiry date is, but you know, hopefully, if, if you're good enough, people will continue to hire you anyway. So I I fully intend on keeping all that going, mm-hmm. um, but ultimately just to make sure that I'm happy with whatever I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. my ultimate goal. <laughs>
So <laughs> the, 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 so, uh, upmost on your priority list mm -hmm. is uh, being happy. Yeah, because I mean, to mm -hmm. honestly, I suppose in this day and age, you can be the most successful person on the planet, but if you're not happy, mm -hmm. there's not really much point to it. So right. um, to me, as long as as long as I have, I'm achieving what I want to achieve, but I'm happy on that same note. I have time to go for holidays, and mm -hmm. I enjoy what I'm doing, and I enjoy working with um, people. I'll continue doing that, and that's right. what I hope to, uh, you know, ten years down the line. I hope, you know, if you ask me. You know, I'm enjoying. I'm still enjoying what I do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And when it comes to you know holidaying, you know, with, with a tight schedule like, like yours, you know, you, you're doing MC work, hosting, uh, modeling, and also running a PR agency of your own, which takes a lot of time yeah. uh, when it comes to planning yeah. and working with different yeah. clients. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, how do you find time to go on holidays? Well, you know, it's actually quite nice because sometimes for for work, you know, um, you get to travel for work. So yeah. that's kind of um, one of the perks. Uh, but other than that, I always like, you know, I'm from PD, so it's an hour away. So regardless of how hectic the week gets, I normally go back at least once every two weeks. So I always make that time to go, um, you know, to at least get out station and you recharge. And it's it makes a world of difference. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I fully believe in making time for yourself and, and for your family and, and doing that. Right. So yeah. time management to you is very <coughs> yes, important. Yes, of course. Yeah. Yeah. You have to make time mm -hmm. for it. So, so, so a basic day for uh, Nadia Heng uh, yeah. begins at what time? Um, I'm normally in the office by 9, by 9. 30. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll normally be in the office. Uh, of course, you know, coming from a lifestyle yeah. like yours, I'm sure you have to get up and do a bit of jogging, do some oh, uh, gym I run, work. I yeah. Love, yeah, I love I love going to the gym. I think that's mm -hmm. essential for I think that's essential for anybody, and right. I think that's part of the reason. And I think that's that's one of the um, elements to being a happy person. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. Make sure you put in your gym time. Really gets your endorphins going. So yeah, I mean, but typically I'd, I'd be in the office by nine. You know, um, and if I'm, if I have an MC job for the day, normally I delegate work, um, and then I'll go do my MC job, come back to the office, and and complete stuff. And I'm out by six. I'll mm -hmm. go to the gym for about an hour and a half. Sometimes cook dinner at home, and uh, yeah, so the cycle continues. Right. The same when, when when people achieve what you have achieved, you know, when when you when you see uh, the elite part of Kuala Lumpur, or you start seeing people in higher circles with a job like yours, I'm sure you do. Uh, things start to change for people, and uh, you know, has that changed your life? You know, uh, some people become condescending. Some people, you know, forget, uh, uh, become uh, very caught up in in uh, uh, going out with different people. You know, I just uh, serial dating, so to speak. You know, it always happens. And I did speak to a, a lingerie model a while ago, and people were very angry because we put her on the airwaves. Why? You know, but 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 she was not selling drugs. So <laughs> I saw it that way. That was it, it, she was just making yeah yeah. Uh, so she did say if if you have a son uh, or daughter who's going to take up modeling, and if they are not strong people, they're not strong inside, oh, yeah. they shouldn't. And what, what are your thoughts on this? Um, I think it builds character, really. I mean, I wouldn't say that if you're not strong, don't go into it. I would mm -hmm. say it builds character. And, um, you know, it's even more of a challenge. If you succeed, then, you know, you've completely achieved something all on your own to be able to, uh, you know, keep yourself together in the industry. It is a tough industry. Um, and, I mean, when, when you mentioned earlier uh, whether being... Uh, you know, like different circles of people. I've noticed that Kale is very small. Everybody mm -hmm. knows everybody. Mm -hmm. And, um, um, you know, it, I, I suppose it never is never really occurred to me whether, you know, someone's from a, a, a more privileged background or of a really, you know, CEO of a massive company. At the end of the day, you've got to treat everyone equally. Um, and, just be yourself, you know. Right. If you're going to strike up a conversation with the average Joe and the mama, mm -hmm. you know, versus, mm -hmm. you know, you just take the same approach that you normally would. Be yourself mm -hmm. and, and re respect people, you know, give everyone the benefit of the doubt. That's what I would do. Right. You know? Very quickly, we've got a few minutes left on the show uh, with your company and you know, off the air, mm -hmm. as you're talking about uh, uh, changing uh, your your way of approaching PR and you're, you're, you're bringing a new concept into Malaysia, mm -hmm. a little bit about bringing parties to clients. Oh. Uh, stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. okay. Shouldn't we talk about that? We shouldn't be talking about that. <laughs> well, that's okay. something new that's mm -hmm. up and coming. Um, yeah. Should have told um, me then. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's up and coming. We don't want to. Uh, we don't want to uh, speak too soon. Right. So it's still in the works. But mm -hmm. I mean, uh, um, fingers crossed that goes well. Mm -hmm. um, but um, yeah, it's a slightly different concept altogether. But right. you know, when I, when that's up and running and when it's 
uh, you know, full on and successful, we'll come back and I'll share all about it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, wait a minute. So she doesn't want to talk about it now. Well, if one wants to find out, one wants to find out more about you. Is yeah. there a website uh, yeah. uh, for your company and uh, for what you do? Um, well, in terms of uh, my own, I actually have a website which I am hoping to revamp again very soon. Uh, it's uh, NadiaHeng.com. I know it's a little bit outdated. NadiaHeng.com. Yes. When's it's the uh, pa- Patulo coming in? I know. You I need know. To well, it's really long. Some and changes need to be made. Type yeah. it wrong, mm-hmm. So I figured mm-hmm. that one, you know. But I, I have I have Nadia Patulo Heng on my Twitter. Right. <laughs> and um, you know, otherwise you can always look me up on Facebook as well mm-hmm. uh, and get in touch with me. Um, yeah. So I mean, the reason why I have a website as well is just so that you know you can put your your your, um, your profile on it just makes life a lot easier, especially at this day and age. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then the company website is AmplifyAsia.com. AmplifyAsia.com. Yeah. Uh, yeah. AmplifyAsia.com. If you want to find out about Nadia's company, if you want to find out about her, it's NadiaHeng.com. Yes. Which uh, may be changed uh, very soon. Well, no, the, the, the website, the, the I mean, the domain will remain the same. Uh, but I'm hoping will. to uh, revamp it and give it mm-hmm. a facelift. Right. Okay. <laughs> so to speak. Fine. Yeah. We'll wait for that facelift. In the meantime, <laughs> you know, uh, there's a big celebration. Idol Fitri is around the corner. Your message to those celebrating Idol Fitri and who are making their way home with this huge exodus yeah. over well, the weekend. Well, Slama Hari Raya. Mm-hmm. Enjoy your weekend with your family and your loved ones. You know, make the most out of it. Um, but, you know, just remember to drive safe. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't stress that enough. And um, if you're if you're feeling tired at the wheel, stop and have a coffee. <laughs> uh, good advice on a Friday evening. That was Nadia Patulo Heng, Miss World Malaysia 2010-2011. It was a pleasure having you in Thank the studio. Thank you so much. We uh, do hope to have you back again uh, at some point, you know, Look to a uh, co-host with us. <laughs> <laughs> that would be lovely. <laughs> Stay with us. Coming up shortly is News 24 X Red 10, Jared Rodnam, keeping you company till midnight. This is A12 Live on Benama Radio 24. <laughs>